quite catch that. Just a few signs, not the whole detail. People have had signs from our policies. They've had quite bold programmes from us and our priorities. People haven't asked to sketch in the detail. What people have wanted to know is what kind of government we will form and what kind of Labour Party will be in government. And the response we have had shows they're very pleased with the answers they're getting. So your cock a hoop, your cock -a -hoop with Tony Blair, everybody loves him. Nobody wants to know any more than they're being told at the moment. Um, That's taking things a little bit silly and to extremes. What I'm saying is there has been a very positive response to the Labour Party. We're delighted with the result tonight and we're confident we can build on that and go forward to win the new constituency. OK. Howard Flight, as a, as a Conservative in Arundel and South Downs, what do you think the Tory party should do? Well, I'd first like to say that we actually had a county council election with a positive swing to us, an increased majority. Secondly, I'd like to say that I think there is a very clear change of trend. Labour has peaked, and that is very important in the way things are going to move one way or t'other. Uh, I would have said that it's clear that a lot of the Conservative voters stayed at home, particularly commenting uh, on the result uh, in Basildon and Billericay. Well, a lot of Labour uh, voters may have stayed at home as well. I, um, I Peter Kellner says there's no evidence one way or the other. Well, I, I think if you went back to the programme earlier, you would have seen that uh, in Basildon and Billericay as a key area, uh, the, the evidence suggested that it was Tory voters staying at home. But anyway, on that hypothesis, the issue is why they still stayed at home. Uh, what are we going to do to make sure they come out and vote for us at the election? OK, well, have you got and a proposal? Yes, I would say there that it is very important that these elections have occurred uh, just in the wake of the BSE problems. Uh, and I think that the Conservative uh, voters and the majority of the country, as the Prime Minister has pointed out, are really extremely upset uh, at being uh, somewhat pushed around by Brussels on this issue and indeed uh, the, the ban on the exports of our beef worldwide having no apparent uh, legal justification. You'd like a tougher uh, line, you'd like said, a tougher line taken, would you? Absolutely. I would have said, as Dr. Winnie pointed out, uh, the, the election is crucially going to be about Europe. Uh, the Conservatives are moving to a tougher line uh, and uh, I think the differences between a Labour administration that would put three and a half million jobs at risk by joining the social chapter and a Conservative government that is now moving to asserting our national rights in Europe. Our relationship with Europe is about trade, essentially, and not political federation. Okay. I think that that uh, is what has kept a lot of Tories still at home. Well, Andrew Stunnell in Manchester, Liberal Democrat, councillor and, and parliamentary, prospective parliamentary candidate, uh, do you think that's a winner for the Tories, uh, bashing Europe a bit harder because of what's happened over beef? I think he's just talking nonsense. In my own area, we've had an increase in turnout. We've defeated five Conservatives, and I didn't find many people voting for us because of Europe. They were voting because of the lousy record of the government in national and in local affairs. And I believe that that's the position that we shall run up to in the general election. This is going to be about economic issues, it's going to be about issues inside the United Kingdom, it's going to be about the style of government we have, it's going to be about the whole nature of politics in the next generation beyond the, the, the year 2000. And do you think uh, the Tories are irredeemably lost now? <laughs> it's never over till it's over, is it? And uh, in my own area, where the Liberal Democrats took 56% of the vote and the Conservatives were 22%, although they have the sitting MP, yes, it looks as though they're past recall, but... Uh, no sensible politician says it's over till it's over. I'm quite sure that the people of this country will be looking very hard at the issues which will be put in front of them. They'll be making some choices. And there'll be some Tory recovery. Of course, there's bound to be. When you've just had the three worst years in recorded history for your party, you've got to believe it's going to get better, haven't you? But to believe that they can overcome the difficulties they've got now by going into... Uh, some situation where you saw off the United Kingdom from the rest of Europe and let it drift off into the middle Atlantic is just cloud cuckoo land. What would you say was the, the biggest danger? I mean, what is it the Tories could put right that would most threaten your position, since you're being very frank about the difficulties you might face? Well, I, I, I've listened this evening on your programme to a number of Conservatives explaining what they think should be put right. Uh, there are those who think that they should put it right by cutting Britain off from Europe. There are those who say they should put it right by convincing the public that uh, uh, they can make some miracle happen on taxation. It looks to me as though they're going to try about four different things, different bits of the Conservative Party trying different things. And one of the messages that I got on the doorstep is that people are fed up with a government that's run out of time, run out of policies, run out of energy. They want to get rid of it. And I frankly don't think whatever kind of solution they come up with, they're going to find themselves able to dig themselves out of the problem. 
Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Phyllis Starkey in the um, uh, gymnasium, I think it is, in Milton Keynes, a Labour pr prospective uh, candidate and a councillor. Now, what do you make of the, the versions you've heard of this? Have you got a, an easy run ahead of you because of tonight's figures? No, I don't think I've got an easy run, though every single seat in the constituency I'm standing for has been won by Labour. Um, I'm confident, but we clearly have a lot of work to do. But the message that's come over to me very strongly in canvassing for this election is that people are deeply disenchanted with this Conservative government. They no longer believe that it knows where it's going, and they feel betrayed by the promises the Conservatives have made to them in the past and that they have not kept. You think they can claw their way back in 12 months using the arguments that they've been using tonight? No, I don't think so. I think that the people of this country have seen through the Conservatives, have seen the, um, that their inability to deliver what this country needs, and they've seen that in order to find to go forward in, with change into the new century, they need to have a new government, and that government would be a Labour one. And, and would you say that uh, Labour had come very much closer to Conservative policies, and what the vote will really be about is competence and maybe boredom with 17 years of the Tories? I don't think that, that running um, good services both locally and nationally, using resources efficiently and running for them for the benefit of the community at large, I don't believe those, that those are conservative values. I think they are Labour values. They have always been Labour values. And Labour has shown its record in local government. And tonight has been a vote of confidence in Labour local government. Phyllis Starkey, thanks very much. And Phil Willis from Leeds, leader of the uh, Liberal Democrats on Harrogate Council and a prospective parliamentary candidate too. Um, we were talking to uh, Paddy Ashdown earlier on and saying, where does this leave the party if Labour are so far ahead? And he said, if it leaves us with 80 seats, we'll be fine and dandy. Well, 80 seats is an exaggeration. Isn't there a problem for the Liberal Democrats that if the Labour Party does as well as tonight's figures suggest they would at a general election, I don't want to use the word irrelevance, but there'll be no role for you in government. You'll be back where you've always been. Well, God help the country if that's the case because listening to your program over the last hour and listening to the complacency of uh, conservative central office and conservative politicians who d seem to totally disregard the results of this evening and then going to Labour who feel that despite having lost ground in the polls that they're just going to simply romp into number 10 in a few or a year's time then the Liberal Democrats do have a place we do have an independence and we've demonstrated yet again tonight that despite the fact that the pollsters write us off before the local elections, write us off as a national force, that back we come in greater numbers. And certainly here uh, in the in Harrogate, where I've been fighting this evening, we've seen virtually the rout of the Conservatives, and particularly uh, Mr Lamont. Uh, um, and so, uh, so what's your prescription for the Liberal Democrats? I mean, to, how do you transfer this local vote into something nationally that counts? Well, we found on the doorsteps this year a totally different picture emerging. Certainly the local elections has not been about local government and local services. It's been, as other people have said, a referendum on national government, national policies, and this discredited Tory government. And people on the doorsteps, particularly Tory voters, have been volunteering to say, we will give you a chance next time, we will vote for you in a general election, whereas previously we've been solid Conservative voters. And I have detected, as of all our canvassers, that that is very much the mood of people who want to say, we cannot yet again vote for these people. OK, thank you very much indeed. Thank all six of you, and um, since it's uh, even-handed to say good luck to all of you, but thank you very much for staying there and joining us tonight. Now, Tenny King, have a look at this election now that we've been talking about for the last two or three hours, and summarise for us, if you would, what you make of it and what you see the risks for John Major and even perhaps the risks for Labour and the Liberal Democrats in it. Well what I make of it is that let's suppose there had been no local elections last year at all. An awful lot of the conversation tonight has hinged on a slight improvement in the Conservative fortunes over the last 12 months. I think it really, oh well that's true, it's very misleading to look at these results in that way. If we'd had no local elections last year at all these would be appalling results for the Tories, amongst the worst in Conservative electoral history. Last year we agreed the Tories weren't in a hole, they were in a bomb crater. I reckon they're still looking into the mouth of a volcano. So the statistics are not really of any help, the slight turn up in the figures? No, I think one could spend an awful lot of time getting buried in the detail of the figures. Yeah. The fact is that these have been awful results for the Conservatives tonight, 
excellent results for Labour and really quite remarkable results for the Liberal Democrats. Peter, what's the, what's the battleground showing? Well, David, first of all, the battleground in the local government arena. Here we have the Conservative collapse from 1979. There are the blue councils, the blue town halls representing all the seats in the, all the councils in this election, the ones contested in this election in England outside London. There were 79 of them in 1979. Over the years, look how they've melted away. Before tonight, there were just four councils. After tonight, there are three without Runnymede, although technically the mayor's casting vote might just hold Runnymede for the Conservatives. Councillors, look way back there to 1975 where the Tories were up there chasing Labour with the Liberal Democrats down the bottom. And there was the Tory success in 1978, the all-time Conservative high. Since then, look how the Tories have dwindled away as the years have gone on. There's 1992 uh, and then uh, Labour going ahead in 1995, last year, best ever for Labour. And now Today we have the result of this uh, councillors' contest, 11,250 Labour councillors all over the country. Uh, the Liberal Democrats now establishing a clear second place ahead of the Conservatives on 4,450. And our projected national share of the vote, if this pattern of uh, change was mir mirrored all over the country, this is what we reckon the estimated share of the national vote would be, 43%. For Labour, 27% the Conservatives, 16% behind, the 16% Labour lead, the Liberal Democrats on 26%. What is the change that represents on the general election in 1992? The answer is Labour up 8%, 16% down the Conservatives, a dream for Paddy Ashton if only he could really make that advance in a national election, 8% up for the Liberal Democrats, a swing from the Conservatives to the Labour Party of 12%, you add 8 to 16, you get 24 divided by 2, 12. Similarly, exactly the same swing to the Liberal Democrats. That would be a dream for the opposition if it really did happen as a general election. Let's just see, just out of interest sake, purely to illustrate what it would mean. Let's open the door of the House of Commons and go inside and see what would happen. On the opposition benches, if this pattern were repeated all over the country, Mr. Major would have 148 Tory MPs. Liberal Democrats would indeed be uh, scoring a triumphant success with 86 Liberal Democrats under Paddy Ashdown. That'll be the best since the war. 27 others, the Nationalists in Northern Ireland, the Nationalists in Scotland and Wales, and over the other side of the House of Commons. There's the magic 330 winning post you have to pass through in order to get an overall majority. Now let's see where Tony Blair's Labour Party would be on the basis of these changes in the pattern of the vote. Wow, 398 Labour MPs, and then when you balance one against the other, you get 398 in the Labour government against 261 in the opposition. That would be a Labour majority of 137. There you are, Frank Dobson. Well, dream, I, dream come true I, on the basis I, of tonight's results. I'd settle results. for that, but I don't really believe in all this guff. But nevertheless, it's this not is, guff. It's just yeah, what yeah, would yeah, have happened. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, everybody knows it's yeah. guff. You know it's guff. Peter knows it's guff. As I say, I'd happily settle for it. But this has been a brilliant night for the Labour Party. We had our best ever performance last year. This is our second best ever performance. The Tories had their worst performance last year. This is their second worst performance ever. They've done desperately badly. Half the people who stood as Tory candidates in this election lost. Nobody, n none of the major parties have ever done like that before. Nick Harvey. It's been a stunning night for the Liberal Democrats, defending quite a high watermark from four years ago. We've uh, held on to all the councils we were defending tonight. We've gone out and won another seven on top. Uh, we've gone forward as the second party in local government and all the names of the places that have been coming up this evening with the orange bands on them are the parliamentary seats that we've got our eye on for the general election and there just seems to be universally good news coming back from all of them and we really can now look at the forthcoming general election with the real confidence that we're going to break through in a big way for the, really the, the first time uh, since the war certainly and probably since the Labour Party was formed and supplanted the Liberals as one of the chief parties of government. So it's, it's a remarkable night for us and one that I think we'll derive great comfort and encouragement from. All right. Well, Labour call it brilliant. Liberal Democrats call it stunning. What's your epithet, Mr. Haig? We've Good? improved on... Uh, we've improved... I'll agree with Frank on, on <laughs> about the gut. That's what I'll agree with him, Pat. We've improved on last year's performance. So, uh, Tony King might want to wish away last year's local elections, but they did take place and we have improved on that. 
Labour are down on that. I think they have passed their peak. But there certainly isn't any complacency in the Conservative Party, which someone was just accusing us of. We've obviously got work to do. We've got to be confident in ourselves. We've got to communicate our message. But we can do all of that. And the general election is there for the winning. And what's your epithet? A promising, do you call it? A good improvement, is what a I would call a it. Good, a good improvement. Peter, Peter Kellner, would you agree that it was a good improvement uh, for the Conservatives? No, I think it's uh, been a really rather tiny improvement after all the good economic news of the last few months. And although we're looking at this nationally, you know, these are local elections. I think back to 1987 when Margaret Thatcher said, the, in, after that a big election victory, we must do something about the cities. And look what's happened to the big metropolitan cities tonight. The Conservatives for the first time are down to third place. Barely half as many councils as the Liberal Democrats. In Birmingham, which they controlled in the 80s, they're in third place. In Oldham, which is the city they ran when Margaret Thatcher came to power, they have no councillors left at all. The fate of Conservatism in Britain's big cities of the Midlands and North is something that's been settled tonight for them in a very disastrous way. I think that's one, certainly for people in local governments, that's one of the big events of tonight. Robin Oakley, when you go back to the House of Commons, when's next Tuesday, Prime Minister's questions, I suppose, uh, what's the atmosphere going to be? What are, what are the Tory party backbenchers going to be saying to each other? Well, I think at the end of the night, this is, uh, once again, it's a brilliant uh, result for Labour. It's a very good result uh, for the Liberal Democrats. They've got all that they could really seriously have hoped for tonight. The Tories will take some small consolation because they've been desperate for this sign that they've bottomed out, that for once in a contest, they've actually improved on the previous year. But I'm put in mind of the old story about the Scottish uh, Tory party agent who heard that the former MP for his seat uh, had, uh, who'd lost the seat by being a rather neglectful MP, had finally got a new seat. And the uh, old agent said, uh, well, what's the majority in the new seat? And they said, oh, 20,000. He said, it'll nay be enough. <laughs> and I think a lot of, lot of null Tory professionals will be looking at this re recovery as it's being put and saying, it'll nay be enough. OK. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the figures. Uh, just uh, for those of you who may just have switched on, um, at this um, early hour of the morning to see how it went, uh, there's still two councils, incidentally, to come in, but anyway, ignoring those. Labour are up 11. This is in terms of controlling councils, taken from no overall control. Uh, the no overall control is down 17. That's the number of councils where various pacts are made because no party is large enough uh, to run the place. Liberal Democrats have gained six. The Conservatives uh, down one Runnymede, uh, which they nevertheless will continue to run because of the mayor's casting vote. Councillors. 143 still to come through, but uh, over 2,800 are already in. Labour up 454, the Liberal Democrats up 145. The Conservatives, you see, losing tonight more than they keep. They lose 560, they keep 503 tonight. And the Independents down 21, others down 21, and the Greens up four. So proportionally, the Greens have done better than anybody. Uh, to summarise it, the um, Tories have had a small recovery, heavy loss of seats, Labour making big gains, the share of the vote slightly down on 1955. The Conservatives held on to three of the four that they were fighting tonight, Macclesfield, Huntingdonshire, Broxbourne, that makes them 13 councils out of nearly 500 in the UK at the moment. Uh, they lost control of Runnymede under the circumstances I explained a moment ago. Labour gain the following, Basildon, Trafford, Hartsmere, Oldham, Wire Forest, Rochdale, Charwell, Peterborough, Cambridge, North Hertfordshire, Milton Keynes, Liberal Democrats gain Tunbridge Wells, Hastings, West Lindsay, Woking, Poole, Wokingham, and they also gain North Somerset uh, through a by-election. Tony Blair, these have been spectacularly good results, he said on this program. We're not the slightest bit complacent, but they may be the slightest bit cheerful perhaps tonight. Dr. Brian Mawinney, Putting a good face on it, said the Labour Party has peaked too soon and now has nowhere to go but down. And John Redwood said there are worries and concerns out there which we must put right before the general election. And Paddy Ashton, for the Liberal Democrats, this is a very good night for us. One in four people across the country have backed the Liberal Democrats. That's uh, Paddy Ashton's comment. And councils in Britain. As a result of all this, this is the overall total of councils. There are now 218 Labour councils in Britain, up 11, of course. 
139 in no overall control. The Liberal Democrats have 55. There are 27 in independent control. And the Conservatives only have 13 councils now. SNP and Plaid Cymru, four. There was only one by-election. I never got the result of it, I'm afraid, from Scotland tonight, I think, in Ayrshire. Councillors' scoreboard, just to see the overall again, the overall number. Now, the exact reversal, or worse, for the Conservatives against Labour of a decade ago. Labour now, 10,500 councillors. The De Liberal Democrats well away in second place. And last year, they were just touching second place by a handful of councillors. Now, they're nearly touching 5,000 firmly in second place in terms of councillors, up 144, and the Conservatives on 3,749. That's how far they've been reduced in local government. 1,271 independent, others 394. Plaid Cymru and the SNP 296. So that's the picture at the end of the night. Now what I'd like to do just before we go is to go to the party headquarters, to our reporters there, and find out from them, now that the parties have absorbed the message, what it is that the parties are going to be saying and doing and what spin, to use the uh, colloquium, they're going to be putting on the results tonight. Let's first of all join Carolyn Quinn, who's at Liberal Democrat headquarters. Carolyn. Well, David, it's pure delight here at Cowley Street because the target seats have been won and more targets than the Liberal Democrats or others expected. Seven council gains, including that uh, by-election as well. And uh, the number of councillors increased far more than they'd even expected. What they're saying is that this shows that they can make inroads into areas where they're going to fight Labour in parliamentary seats, places like Sheffield and Birmingham Yardley, but also, and more significantly, that they've won in areas where they need to win at the general election in order to get the Tories out. They've also expressed delight at their increase in the share of the uh, national vote, which wasn't expected to happen at all. There was certainly no sense that they would increase their share from last year but they are up to 26% and they're saying that that will translate into parliamentary votes as well. Carolyn, thank you very much. Uh, just a word on the by-election in Ayrshire. I'm told it was a Tory victory. The Tories held their by-election in Ayrshire. That's some consolation for you, Mr. Haig. How about um, it? How about it? <laughs> and um, we, let's go and join Mark Mardell at Labour Party headquarters. What are they saying, Mark, tonight? Well, John Prescott has cracked open the bubbly. Tony Blair has declared it a brilliant result. But I think the feeling is that there's a solid satisfaction rather than ecstasy. What would have given them ecstasy here is if the Tories had melted down. They, they wanted to see, I think secretly they wanted to see those Tory losses much higher so that there would have been real hysteria in the Tory ranks. But as one of their officials said to me uh, not long ago, what more could we do? We've hit all our, all our target seats, all the important parts where we uh, were hoping for marginals in the general election. So I think there's a, there's a great, uh, great feeling of satisfaction here tonight. But Tony Blair warned when he spoke to the troops uh, not that long ago, he warned them not to be too complacent. And I think that's something that uh, Labour officials are trying to tell their MPs and tell their people on the ground. They're very concerned that they're, they're just going to see, uh, see, see themselves win because the, um, the Tories are, are falling apart. In fact, one of the biggest cheers here tonight was when Robin Oakley said that John, Ma John Major wouldn't be going. So whilst that, that is a certain feeling here, they also want to build on it. I think what we're going to see next is a, quite a lot of speeches in May from Tony Blair in the road to the manifesto. Quite hard to the party saying there have to be priorities in government and there have to be quite uh, tight controls on spending. So more of that sort of talk from Tony Blair. Mark, thank you very much indeed. And lastly, we join John Sopel at the Conservative Party headquarters. John, could I just put a question to you first of all? What do you think the Conservatives secretly thought would happen tonight? I think they secretly thought it would be a bit worse than it has been. I think they were worried about what the long-term effects might have been if the results were in the very bad range of possibilities, i.e. could it lead to fresh speculation, fresh turbulence, fresh uncertainty for the party. And I think they now feel rather confident that there won't be that sort of spasm of concern uh, after this result because it may, it, you know, the, the American politicians say, have you got the mo, have you got the momentum behind you? Well, they may not have the momentum, but they're certainly, perhaps they feel justified in saying that they've gone, come through the worst of it 
and that they're now moving in the right direction. And we've heard Brian Mulwiney say, look, Labour have reached the crest of the wave. Well, I think the opposite side of that argument is that the Conservatives last year were at the very bottom of that wave, and maybe now they're just beginning to rise slightly out of it. And if they can feel that they can say to their party workers, the MPs at Westminster around the corner from here, look, you know, there is still a fight to be fought, and it could be won, then maybe that will see a return to some of the discipline that has been lacking. And this has been a campaign that's been marked by sort of great uncertainties and, you know, every day the central office has planned to do one thing on one issue, something else has come up in the headlines that has blown them off course. And so it hasn't been a successful campaign in the sense of the Conservatives setting the agenda they wanted. That is something they're going to have to get right. John, thank you very much indeed. And on that note, it being 20 to 3, it just leaves me to thank our guests here. Well, not our guests, our, <laughs> our employee here, Robin Oakley and... Tony King, our visiting employee, and our guests here on the right, the three um, MPs, and um, Peter Snow and everybody behind here who's been doing all the work behind me uh, as we've been on the air. Um, I suspect local election results get very, very quickly forgotten, except for the hapless people who've lost seats and the happy people who've gained them tonight. But on the whole, a week or two from now, if you ask people what had happened in the local elections, the political caravan would have rolled on. The result does seem to be that John Major's position, at any rate, is safe. But as for the Conservative Party, May the 3rd, which has now dawned, still is looking pretty bleak with a long uphill struggle to the victory they want to reach at the next general election. Anyway, from all of us here in the BBC's election studio, we will be back, of course, for a bigger election within 12 months. Uh, in the meantime, from all of us, good night.